Hey, hey, Eric, what's happening, man? What's up, my friend? Good evening. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'm pumped to have you here. I'm just going to introduce you real quick. So, Eric Hansen, the owner and designer of Phobos Knives. Now, Phobos Knives, for operators, by operators. I'm going to bring Absolutely. people, you know, with you through a journey tonight. I think everybody's really going to appreciate this because when it comes to Phobos knives, there are a lot of details that you'll see. Now, I think before we kick this entire thing off, I'd like the opportunity for you to really introduce yourself and just a little bit of your background to the audience to put all of this into perspective and why you design knives the way you do. Hey, uh, good evening. My name is Eric Hansen. I'm the owner operator of uh, Phobos Knives. Um, I, my background was basically as a soldier. I joined when I was 17 years of age. My dad didn't want me to. He had to sign for me, but I went in. Um, uh, I mean, he, he wanted me to be, be a metallurgist. We have a family of steel machinist business that, that that's up in, up in Toledo. But uh, I spent 22 years in the Army, spent seven years in another organization after that. I'm all doing counterterrorism work in some of the smallest places. And you know, that you can do it. Uh, been all over the world, you know, four continents and th three wars and seven different operations and, you know, some was six years in combat and fucking all over the planet. And, uh, you know, that's what's driven me to, to do, do what I do now. You know, I got into knives with, with Ray Annis and, and Doug Stryker and Montrock and, and, you know, way back in the early nineties, um, you know, I sent them a couple of designs and, you know, I said, can you, can you do that? Can you make it like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. You know, and, and then that led, led into one thing and me doing searching for my own and, and I wanted, you know, they weren't fast enough. So I, I wanted to, to, to do, you know, do it myself. And, and then it was, Hey bro, where, where did you get that? I said, well, I made that, you know, and it's like, bro, you know, and then they told two bros and they told two bros and et cetera. And, you know, here we are, you know, decades later and I'm, you know, trying to make people smile with, with, uh, just a kick-ass product, you know? So nice. Uh, yeah, other than that, you know, here, here, we, here we are. Let's, let's, let's get to it. No, that's great. And you know, there is one thing that I have to say, and we could have brought a number of different topics to the table tonight, but bottom yeah. line is with the hundreds of topics, we're both knife guys. So it comes easy, but what I'd really love to do yeah. is, is show the people the detail and talk about why, Phobos knives really, in my opinion, are differentiating themselves from other knife companies. So, for example, when you talk about USA made blades and, you know, you go to you yeah. know, the traditional sort of K bars in the world, very, very functional designs, fantastic designs, but fairly simple, pretty easy, <laughs> not a lot to them. You get into even yeah. some of the you know more call them modern you know knife makers and companies and brands you know SE knives again beautiful knife very functional but very plain yeah. very simple not a lot of detail even through tops knives and with some of their <laughs> outside designers pretty simple but there was one thing yeah. that caught my attention immediately the first time I got my hands on Phobos knives and having never handled them and getting them in my hands for the first time I was like whoa wait. There's a lot of little touch points that yeah. go into this, okay? There's a lot of thought and effort into each little fine detail. And so today, I would love to bring our viewers through the journey and through your thought process and why each one of these little design elements has made it into the anatomy of the Phobos knife. Yeah. So first off, let's, let's work our way I, and, and I want to premise this whole thing by asking a question, but we're going to work our way from the handle to the blade. But as a designer, I know you can approach it a few different ways. Do you yeah. start with the interface being that handle and how your hand is going to index? Or do you start with a blade shape and meld the handle to the blade shape? Well, you know, I, I first started out like the, the what you had in your hand was the tier 1C um, you, you know, tier, the tier, tier one design, 
um, a, a, a shorter person's wedge, a draw point, and and then that that handle I call my full size combat handle. Um, you know, we have a boot size like on the tier one BC, the boot, you know, boot finger with with finger choil. That's the boot size combat handle. Um, and then on the tier one minis and the mini minis is the companion handle. So it's a companion size combat handle on the Alaris was my Omni positional, um, combat handle. I just, you know, what, what drove the name was at the end of the day, you know, you're preparing and I, and I've said this in video before, but it's true is, you know, a, you know, a commander or leader, they're, they're going to be, th they only have so much time and so much money. So you're going to prepare and just like you would if you were building your bug out bag or your overland truck or, or your rucksack or or your your get home bag if that's your thing you know or, or what or whatever or or your how you safe your house you know um you start with with what's most likely going to happen and what's the most dangerous thing that can happen and you prepare for both of those you know there's 50 million things that you can do but you start out with most likely and most dangerous and so the ergos, I try to, the, the hand anatomy, even though your hand is, is different than mine, it's, it's like, it's identical. You, you know, you know what I mean? It truly is identical. And so there are certain things that I, I start with on the handle and that's really where, where I, I try to, I try to start, you know, when I see, see a design or, or see, you know, something that's out there, it's like, wow, that's, that's, that's functional. You can see it right away to know that they they um they took their time they know what the fuck they're doing uh and it and it equates in a functional quality and that's that's what i i try to produce first is you know a lot of guys are worried about fit and finish of course you are i mean the customer wants a good quality equal, equal life that's in equilibrium and looks good aesthetically but you know a, a quality that shows through in the performance of your knife and that, that's that's that comes through in your ergonomics and then and then the design of the knife as poor as per its specific task you know yep. can you know, all knives be catch all mm, yes and no but not really you know some knives are very very niche and some are are universal i i do try to put as much as i possibly can into into a knife but um, sometimes it's, it just, it just doesn't fit, you know, yep. it, you know, so, so in, in a nutshell, I, I, I like starting with the handle, um, and then going, going from there and, and, and you all can see the theme, you know, with the gyms and the pommel, but yeah. I'll, I'll digress. Next question. Yeah, no. And I mean, fair enough. And so that sort of leads into the actual fine details. And if you look from handle to handle, and even though you've made yeah. you know specifically different size handles, you bring yeah. a suite of design elements to them, and it translates from handle to handle to right. handle, right? So yes. let's talk about those elements. And again, we're going to work <clears throat> back all the way forward. So you okay. have introduced uh, a pommel on almost all, or if not all of your designs. And, you know, to me, uh, you know, this has a couple of things in mind, and I think you're going to either approach this, um, and for me, I come from the wilderness background, and I can see where I could, you know, crack, you know, some, you know, tinder, or, you know, I'll, I'll get little, you know, fire tinder bundles and, and crack them and split them open, or, you know, you yeah. could even get some bark and mash it down, or, yeah. you know, who knows, maybe you need, you if you're foraging and you find some nuts, you could crack them open, so, you know, that's yeah. the angle I come from, and that would work extremely well, but I think from a combat perspective or the operator's perspective it would have something else potentially in mind oh yeah it's uh, the <clears throat> the pummel is definitely used again what's the most dangerous thing you can do is crack a skull split split a wig and 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 you know if you look on video and some of the literature out there that you read you know it takes your stab seven to 14 times before you know you're stabbed um it takes 30 to 40 seconds in some video for people to realize that they're, they have been rolling around with a dude that's been cutting them and stabbing them. And you got to understand that if you're, if someone's going to knife fight with you, is willing to knife fight with you, 
They probably have some <laughs> some iota of training, and their knife is probably sharp. So when when you, you your first move, you, you know, and I and I tell this to, to to customers, you know, when you when you draw when you're on CCT TV, closed circuit television at a gas station, on a Sunday night in 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 some rural area or wherever or some some Memphis gas station and three dudes come around the corner, one from one side of the garage, the gas station, one the other, and the one dude was sitting in the chair and they start to approach you and you set them straight. Uh, you, you know, you draw your knife, you draw it, you're going to, on closed circuit TV, you're going to get arrested. So you, you need, you, you can smack a dude non-lethal with your knife and the DA is going to say, well, you drew a knife, you're, you know, you know well, and, and and what those guys on video are going to say, because this happened, um, we, we were just asking for cigarettes. I'm just asking for some money for some cigarettes. No, you weren't. You were going to shake me down. And I, you know, whap, and you, you you drill a dude right on his forehead before before that you draw, before they reel, and his buddies, all they see is him reeling in pain on his backside, and they don't want no, no, whatever you gave him, they don't want none of that. You know, so so you don't you don't have to stab somebody when you draw your knife. Cause you got a non, just like law enforcement, there's a force continuum, you know, as you go through your Oda loop and, you know, it, 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 it just gives you this option to be able to defend yourself. And and if you got to go lethal, Hey man, that's his problem. You, yep. you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, so as we move forward then, I mean, and I know that, you know, there are a couple of different shapes and whether or not you're going to take the Cacula or you're going to take the Alaris, they definitely differ a little bit. Now, going to your right. original handle concept and original design, it is fairly thin through the back side. Now, yep. that is, again, for a very specific reason, right? Yep. Well, it, the, the reason I, I try to design all the handles ergonomically as you rotate across your callus line to where you can grip and you can strike without subluxating or dislocating your knuckles or breaking your fingers. Like even the Alaris, you even as, as large as that handle is, you can punch with the Alaris. Yep, I see. You you, yep. you, you can punch with that. Now I wouldn't I wouldn't be I I wouldn't be in a, a blade a blade forward. You know that's I I, I would be in a reverse grip. Yep. You know, it presents its own problems, but, but in, in a nutshell, um, you know, I've been out in the wilderness and for anybody who's hunted remotely and hunted, in, in, you know, and in, in, you're in the freaking food chain, <laughs> you, you may, you, you may not, you just at, at any given second, you may have to use your knife for that worse for that most dangerous scenario where you're not, and you're in a knockdown drag out trying to save your life and, 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 you know, get whatever's on you off, whether that's a human being or, you know, of some, some fucking mammal who's hungry. Right. But you know, you know what I mean? Or sees you as a meal, you know? So, so that, that's what the pummel's for is, is to bash open coconuts. Yeah. Of coconuts of various sizes, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it doesn't matter what model you have. I mean, whether or not you're talking about your tier one C, doesn't matter if you're talking about the Cacula. And <laughs> interestingly, is even with the Alaris, you have an oversized lanyard hole. I mean, nice and generous, the ability to get some pretty honking cordage through there or double up yeah. if you need to. And the yep. other thing that I like, and I'm really, the, the focus of this is sweating the details, but you know, you're very carefully chamfering those edges so that there's no sharp spots on those corners. So you're not yeah. digging up your cordage, right? Right, right. So, so like the oversized lanyard is comes from tethering your your knife. Like when you're climbing, when you're on rope, and you want to be able to tether your knife, whether that's on a on a retractable. Or, or whether you put a, a, a D ring through there, or a oh, snap yeah. shackle, yep. or or a cord a cord loop for your snap shackle, you want when you're on rope. Now, now guys who climb that are strictly climbers and they're using chalk, and but I'm talking about mountaineering when you got a 120 pound rucksack on your back, 
and you're top belaying or you're, you're, you've a couple guys who climbed up ahead and they're lead, they're in lead, you know, whatever. That's, it's just what you don't, you know, rock is one thing, but oh shit, knifey, you know, that, that <laughs> again, that, that's, that's not. So in the climbing world, they tether their knives. Um, and that's really what that is for. Now, if you, you look at, I put my lanyard hole on top because if you put a lanyard hold on the bottom and you actually put tension on your lanyard hold, it will roll the knife in your hand. So a lanyard hole that's on top is directly connected to your grip. If it's on the bottom and it and it's around, it'll want to roll the knife to to the other side once you put it under tension. So that's where and and it's just it's it's having I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't had a knife that had a lanyard hold on the bottom and it well, knife wanted to roll out of my hand. Interesting. You know, you know I, you know you know what I'm saying? So the experience of what you know what 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 works and it's not you know like the extended pommel it doesn't it's not there for aesthetics it's there for for you to be able to use because you never know you know you know you know what i mean you just you never freaking know and and that's again it goes back to most likely most dangerous and all those little elements in some way shape or form are going to be in in one of my knives yep and that's just the way i see it and 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 so far it's resonating with you know i've had i've had you know one customer it was it's so complex it's it's okay a, a, a car a truck is complex you know an airplane is complex but you still flip and use them <laughs> you know you know you know you know what i'm saying and and I think ergos are muy importante. You know, you know, it's it's um, now. It, you know, so it uh, they'll always be there in yep. some way, shape, or form. You know. Yep. So, so so with all these activities, you know, and again, you know, the the positive grip on the handle being so critical. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've introduced a few additional design elements that I believe you would say are strategic for maybe, you know, withdrawing the knife from the sheath or maybe if you're plunging. So the jimping and you have yeah. a couple of different strategic locations of jimping yes. and a couple of different patterns of jimping, whether it's, you know, more towards the, you know, the, the butt end or pommel end yeah. of the knife or whether it's, you know, up on the top of the spine, maybe it's for your thumb or even on the underside and in that choil area and that undercut, you know, you got some strategically placed jimping in there. Talk to me a little bit about that in terms of positive grip and the lock up on the knife. Well, like like on your on the the tier ones series and the MKBs and all that, I don't put a belly under underneath or or a second a second finger groove. Um, what what the what the the hollow the the hollow portion and I'll I'll get to the gym because it leads directly to it. But this right here is is to, allows you to slide across a knife in transition. You know whether whether you're using a large knife or 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 a small a smaller knife, but this this once you put a belly on on a knife, it becomes more of a directional cutting style handle. You know, and I I, I do that on the Alaris because there's a lot more food prep involved, and I do have a directional cutting handle that I haven't come out with yet, at least to the public. You know, there is some slight belly there, and and what that what that it's it, that straight instead of elongating your grip it straightens your grip a little bit more so you can get more downward better better purchase on a downward product or a directional cut so right? just to you're, just to you're, clarify you're, you're saying after the original choil you end up with a slight second groove and then some belly through the underside of the handle and then the opposite here with the tier one series yes you still right. have that choil but then it's a single swoop all the way around Correct. a continuous curve. Right. Correct. So this, this knife, this knife is, you know, out of your 10 is designed to slash or, or drive, whether I'm one, two, three, four, five, you know, up, you know, all that, all that collie stuff. Um, and on the Alaris is, is, is a more, a, a more downward, downward cutting or directional cutting 
pur purpose. Now the gyms, what I've found, you know, like even on the forward finger choil, I, I keep those, keep those, you know, you know, we don't, we, we they stay sharp because you can use it for a ferro rod or, or, or whatever. And some people say, well, it's, it's sharp. It's going to hurt you. No, it's not. The way the body is designed in your nerve tracks and your dermatones, um, you can, if, if you've ever felt a feather touch you or you've gone to, if you've gone to itch somewhere and then a, a little, you're, you're not itching exactly where you need to be itching, there's a bug there or whatever, that's because the dermatones, your nerves, they, they don't, they don't tell you exactly this is, this is right where it's, where it's ha happening. They just kind of give you a general sense of what's going on. You got five nerves in your body. You got pinprick, feather, you know, hot, cold, and then deep pressure. And the pinprick and the feather, the dermatones are spread out enough that you can squeeze. I can squeeze on this, like literally on, on this forward finger tool as sharp as it is. And there's, there's a, but it's not tremendous. It's not going to cut me. It's not, it's not, it doesn't hurt. I mean, there's some pain, but again, when you're, when you're, you know, when you're, when you're in that moment, you need something that's going to, that's going to hold and keep and stay right where it needs to be. And that's what the jimping is, is for, you know, I've had it said to me, if you, if you design a handle correctly, you don't need jimping. Yeah. Okay. That's if you're fighting with a tri stick. Yeah. You know, but if you're fighting, if you're fighting with someone who's non-compliant, who means you ill, <laughs> Yeah. I, I would want, I would want all that I, you know, you know what I mean? And, and so, um, no, I, I get it. It, it, it. You know, if you're going to be in the woods and you're setting up a camp, you literally in the first two or three days could be using your knife literally for eight, six, seven, eight hours a day for days in a row, building fire, building, the, building a shelter, building, building a raft, do, building traps, doing, you know, making punji, you know, you know, Pungy's doing, um, it, it's, it's all, it, it, I understand that. And that's why we, on the smaller jimping, I broaden, you know, on your, on your forward finger choil or on your finger choil and on your, on your thumb hold, I broaden that across the, um, the scale and the steel and then across the other scale. And again, that gets back to the dermatome of, the nerve endings being spread so far apart, but it gives you a complete squeeze on, on my thumb to where it's, it's not just this thin line that's going to find one nerve and then it's going to be spread across the entire entirety of the, the anatomy of my hand. And the same thing with the, the big gyms. If you look like if, if you, if you look, you have some relief, then you have relief and then you have relief in the back. So if you you have some relief on the handle, some relief in the center, you have relief in the back. If I take if I take my hand and I and I put it my my thumb my thumb is right on this relief, my palm is on the second relief, and then if I if I bear down right on the third the third relief of the on the top of the scale, and then and then that's what holds your hand in there. And, and if you see your thumb is not supposed to ride on the very center of the palm, it's supposed to ride in the groove off to the side, like, like this. So it's not centered. Ah. It's off to the side. Yep. And then that, that those little teeny tiny ergonomics, you know, I've had guys, Oh, that's all bullshit. No, it's not. And, and then the first time they, they handle like, Holy shit, dude. You know, I've, I've been out at ranges and had, you know, truck drivers pull up in, in, in a couple of different places. It's, it's, you know, bringing bringing tires or, or bringing you know, uh, you know, burn burn material or, or whatever. And they're like, "Hey, hey, bro, what's that? Knife? You know, what's that knife? What's that knife on the side of your hip? That's that's mine." <laughs> well, yeah, okay, uh, obviously that's yours. I said, "That's a Phobos, Phobos." You know, and, and they 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 see the handle. That's all they see. Yeah. You know, they see the knife in the sheath, but they see the handle and I hand them right. and, and I've had some old timers, you know, even when I was in uh, Escanaba across the street from Bark River, there's a, the, the train goes right through there in between the corporate house and the, and the factory. And there's the old, old guy named Denny. He's like, he's like, Hey bro, he saw my, from, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for the train to go by. So I can walk over to the factory, you know, six o'clock in the morning and or seven thirty when they open. Um, and he's like, "Hey, dude, 
I'm kind of, you know, and I, so he hops down and I, I hand him, he's like, holy shit. You know, he's in, I wish I'd have had this when I was in Vietnam, you, you know, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's, it's, it just, it makes, when you, when you have old timers who all they had was what they were given and then they see something that's made specifically and and that, that, that's proof positive that the stuff is, is being done, being done right. Yeah. Yep. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So you end up also with, um, you know, some fairly subtle yet you can definitely feel the uh, texture on the side yeah. of the scales too. Yeah. And I mean, that translates from design to design or model yeah. to model, yeah. I should say. Yeah. So is that also just for like positive indexing yeah. or grip? Well, yeah, correct. So like, even like, like, like if you want, if you want good tactility on, on a handle material, you, you want micarta or you want canvas. Yep. Right. And, and if you, if you want a scale that looks super good, you want G10. But Jeep then when your hands dry out, it, it can become real, you know, kind of slick. And and with the scallops, the scallops all over, you know, across, you, you know, across the, we, we put those in there. It could be because it gives you this, this grip ability that stops you from running, you know, running your hand up the, up, up the blade because, you know, I have a Quillian, you know, a guard, but it's, they're not huge. Yep. And I'm not a super fan of, of having a huge Quillian because it, it, it limits what you can do with the knife. It limits the, um, the, you know, your grips. It just, it, it forces you to use a knife in a certain way. And that's never kind of been my philosophy is always, you, you try to open yourself or allow yourself the, the ability adaptive to be adaptive, to go where you need to go with the tools that you tools that you use to, to, to become successful in whatever tasks that you're, you know, you're doing, yep. you know, whether that's getting in somewhere or getting through something or, you know, finding cables in the ground and cutting through them because you're, you're, you're discontinuance, you know, bad guys, you know, communications or, or you know, what, whatever, whatever it may be. You know, so again, you never know what you're going to be using your <laughs> your knife for. You, you know, you know what I'm saying. Right. So, well, it's interesting you say that because not only you know do you have the you know capabilities of the knife itself, but you've introduced things like, for example, a bow drill divot, which you know yeah. you find yourself in a dire situation, and heaven forbid you have to go primitive, but sometimes you got to go primitive, and you've actually introduced an additional tool here. Right, right, and so like, like there's been some some reviewers and like Bodrum. Who the fuck's gonna use a Bodrum divot? True. Um, hopefully the electricity never goes out, but, but <laughs> we know that it's done. Yep. You, you know, you know what I mean. Or the battery dies in your truck, or, or whatever. But what what your what the Bodrum divot divot allows you that takes using that takes away 50% of your resistance. So you, you've got, you've got, you've got your spindle now on steel spinning on steel contained by the micarta. And the only you, it allows you to put all the pressure or all the resistance is now on your fire hearth. And, and, um, there was a dude in Germany, I forget his name, uh, uh, Alex, Hertzgard or yeah, I think Alex Hertzgard. I, I'm, I'm hacking up his name. I apologize, Alex. He'd never done a bow drill before, and he had literally in in like forty some odd seconds, he had he had smoke. He had an ember, and within 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 like ninety seconds, he he had a had a fire going with his freaking bird's nest, and he's like, holy shit, I've never I've never done this before. And and he says, all I've seen in videos and heard everybody talk about the the absolute ass tear that it is to do a bow oh, drill, and it is. I mean, shows you can when it matters. Yeah, right. You've seen the right. best survival experts on yeah. TV failing at it time and time and time Absolutely. again. It's it's not an but easy task. <laughs> not an easy task. Well, because yeah. you can use the wrong wood. Yeah, you, know, you, you can use the wrong wood and never get a fire, never know it. You know, there can be just a just you know, two or three percentages of humidity that just will turn that into an incredibly long task. So, so if I can take away, 
you know, your bearing block and give you some steel on your spindle and create less resistance for you, that only ups your probability of success. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and we've, we've started fires. I, I mean, been to Norway, been to Alaska, been to, you know, use manure, use, use, you know, you know, all kinds of, you know, batteries, steel wool, you know, gasoline. I mean, it just, we use all kind of, you know, any, any kind of, just been all over the world, but, and, but knowing that that, and that, that's the other thing is, is when you create your, your bearing block and your, in your fire hearth or your, or your, or your hearth, you know, um, you only have so many times before those are wrecked. Right. You know, so yep. you got to, you literally have a break in period, a window of, of a probability of this is when it's going to happen and the shit don't work no more. You know, so, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? so this is one more thing. that's not going to break down on you. Yeah. You, you, know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So there's, there's, there's there really is a lot of deeper uh, philosophical, you know, input if, if you would, if that's even a thing, but you know, but there is, it's, it, I know it works. Right. And not, not many people have tried it because it's, they think it's going to be too hard, but I, I, I would venture to say that they will be practically or, or very surprised once they actually use their bow drill divot. Well, I know a guy who's challenged me to making sure that I practice out in the wilderness with know. a Phobos knife, and yeah. I don't know who would have challenged me to that. I but don't know who done that. <laughs> I don't know, brother. So more to come. Yeah, man, we'll see. And you, you'll, you'll, you'll see it, dude. Yep. So, so, so let me ask you this, because I think something that is, I'm going to call it underrated, um, but, you know, alternate grips things like for example when you're doing food prep and your pinch grips and the ability to get tight up against the blade and you know this is one thing everybody gets this but what's underrated is your ability to get up and real tight and you've introduced and i personally also and i have some examples i always design with these scallops now i know some people end up flaring i always bevel yeah and i like yes. beveling because it keeps the knife thin through the grip area and it allows you to get tight and it doesn't create any hot yep. spots and to me you've nailed it there so talk to me a little bit about that well and and that was really using using a blade you know some people flare it out to where it fits into a sheath but then you can't you it, again it limits you you know this is about you know, like some guys say, oh, it's this puny, puny BC handle, this puny handle. And it's like, if you ever, you know, you see a screw, a little teeny tiny screwdriver, you never hear anybody bitch about how small the teeny tiny screwdriver is because they put it across their callus line yep. and they put it in the small, they don't monkey, like, like Jacob Peterson talks about monkey grip and a knife. Hey. You put it in, you put your, put your thumb, put it in the back of your thumb. And, and yeah, when you put it in the back of your thumb, you need a bigger grip. You need a freaking baseball bat. But what this allows, this allows you to do is to reach in with a pinch grip, tendon, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it is that you're doing. I can, I can now, I can put, I can facet my hand and I can pinch in, pinch down on, on the grip and I can still use the scales on the fat of my, on the, you know, on, on my palm, my, 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 my Parkinson's is kicking in, but, but, and I, I can, I can, you know, cause you, cause you may cut around things. Correct. You may cut around. You may not cut in front of things. You may cut in behind something. And so this, this allows you to have a, a good feel for the knife all the way around with, you know, so, so proprioception, which is a thing. So you, you can feel exactly where you are and what, what it is that you're doing. So you can make finer cuts and you can go in there and do do what you do what you need to do, but that's why this is beveled the way that it is. So you can use it to pinch either up the blade, or I can I can crawl all the way up the blade, 
you, you know, do, do what I, it's just, it's, again, it's not bull, you know, it's not bull, like even the big scallops in the center, these are, these are pinch scallops. So I can literally pinch ah. blade and they, and I can, I can feel and have tactility on rotation. You know, the, the, the scallops are all, all the way up and down, down the blade are, are designed to keep you from sliding, sliding forward, reinforced with the jimping. And, and it works even better with the glove. And I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, that you have to wear gloves. Um, cause you don't, uh, you know, you, you don't need to wear gloves a lot. A lot of times when you're using, we were building bombs or, you know, using certain kinds of material and electrical systems or whatever you didn't, you, you, you had to, you had to be, feel what you were doing. So you couldn't, you couldn't wear a glove, you know, and you, you're always using your knife to cut wire or cut deck cord or primer or, you know, you know, whatever, or create boosters or, you know, whatever, whatever you're doing, you know, but it's, it's a, a glove. Wasn't everybody thinks that everybody wears gloves in the military. That's not, that's you do at certain times and you do at other times you don't, Yep. you know, so it's just, it's just, everything I try to make and, and we, we round, we round it off and melt it down is what, you know, the way I like to say, everything is melted down to where it feels, it, it just, it just, you know, you know, you know, you know what I mean? I can, I can feel the knife and not have hot spots. Yep. You know? So, that kind of leads us into the transition into the blade. And there's always yeah. a few different ways that can go. Yeah. Um, to me, your design criteria matches with the way I feel, with the way I work and believe. And the first thing is, you know, you've, you've A, carried your scales down onto the guard versus leaving the guard exposed metal, which I love. It gives you some more surface yeah. area yeah. in combination with that nice bevel, softening everything and melting it down so that you can get on there. But in many of your designs and not all of them, but in many of them, you've introduced a nice generous finger choil in the blade, which to me, yeah. you've also nailed because some people will design that finger choil and I guess what I would say, maybe it's the right size. Sometimes it's too small. Sometimes yeah. they, they don't get the grind in the right location. So you yeah. a you've gotten the choil to the right diameter. <laughs> I personally designed to around the diameter of a quarter when I put a you know a, a finger yeah. choil or bigger, and you've done what I call the two thirds grind where you have your you know your main ricasso area nice and yep. thick two-thirds of the way through that choil until you hit your plunge line which gives yep. you enough steel to bear on so you're not bearing on thin blade stock right. and yep. i don't know how people don't get that right i i don't i don't i don't understand it either and, and what's funny is you and i have not talked about this this is all off the cuff you know, this is not, this is real time talking and, and you're, you're freaking spot on. That's why I love you, brother. Cause you got your <laughs> shit together. I'm a knife guy. <laughs> and, I know, you know, and, and I've, I've had, I've had some guys, you know, the fucking choil takes up a lot of the blade and, and that's true. But the utility that you get with climbing up on your knife, the big, it, it create, everybody talks about balance when you can center your knife or your hand, excuse me, your hand, whether it's a mini. Or an MKB seven. Yep. You, you know, you know what I mean? Because if, if I'm going to fight with you, bro, you, I mean, you can, you just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to freaking destroy you. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I mean, barring dark Marqueda, you, uh -huh. know, you know what I mean? <laughs> freaking, that, that knife God dude that he is. Um, but it, it's, it all comes down to what, what is functional. And, and honestly, when I did, when I did the mini and I, I was tired of getting my knife caught in boxes 
And so I wanted to, that's how I, I, I started out um, with the forward finger choil because, you know, this is, it's, I mean, I'm sure it's been done before, but it's relatively a new kind of thing, you know, in, in the last couple, you know, decades or, or, or in modern knife, you know, design. But, you know, when I was, it, it's, that's why I did it is so you could plunge, you could plunge the blade down through and the choil would allow you to slide back out and continue to cut instead of, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And then the other, the other benefit of, of it is, is you can choke up on a knife now. So I was like, okay, what size do I, you know, cause my sharpening choils, you know, I, I use three eights, you know, if like, if you look on some of the blade designs that I have, like the tier one, not the tier one C, the, t the tier one has a three eighths. It has a wire stripper in it, but that was originally on a, on a, on a regular, on a regular knife. That's just a, a, a large in, in large sharpening choil. And it's the, the, the edge is pushed down so you can actually sharpen all the way to the edge. <coughs> Cause in your fine work, you're usually, you're, you're, you're using, you use this, you know, you know what I mean? <coughs> Excuse me. And, and if you, if you can't get your stone in there to get a good smooth stroke on that part of the steel, it's not going to be as sharp as it needs to be. <coughs> Excuse so, me. So but, uh, let me ask you, because the calcula is sort of in between, is, is this design element intended to still get forward? Was that your intent or is that more of an oversized sharpening choil? Well, it's, it's both. It, that was a little, in the original design, that was a little bit shorter and it was it was large enough just so you could get your finger in there, and 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 so and not and then like some people say, well, you you could still cut yourself. Well, you could, but you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna work hard to cut yourself. Yeah, you gotta work hard. Yeah, you gotta work little, hard. You know, you gotta work hard to do that. And anyway, it's this this is like like I, I my personal experience a four and a half to five and three quarters of 5.8 inch blade is where you should be with a fighting knife. Mm. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So like, like, like my calculo, you, it doesn't have that forward finger chill to fight with, but this, this blade is not large enough now that I don't need, I don't need, I don't need to balance out. I'm, I'm, I am perfectly capable of, of anything I need to do with no balance issues with, with, with just the grip itself. Right. And it's light enough and it's fast enough. And now the same thing I can, I can, I can go reverse grip if I need to, if I, I can come back around and, and, and get it, you know, get it to where I need it, need it to be. But, you know, so that's, that's, now the minis, the the mini was originally a. I designed it as a four again a four point four inch blade just like the Cacula, but I had some guys like bro, I'm in New York City and I to be for me to carry this legally on the subway, I gotta have a four inch blade, and so I was like, okay, so you know I I designed it and you know we shrunk it down a little bit now it's a four inch blade, and then like even the mini mini. One of the customers was like, you know, um, Jesse Carter. It's like, hey, bro, I need a, you know, I need a smaller blade. And he, I was like, sure. And and now it's, you know, it's taken a few years, but, but we're here and we got it, and we're and we're doing it. You, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Now I put a forward finger choil on that because there's so much utility in what you can do in with with the blade, whether that's fight or open, you know, fight with a hundred boxes out, out in the warehouse. You know, or 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 cut no nail, or or you know, ch chicken wire or or freaking bob wire, you know, whatever, whatever, you know. So, um, you know, I I think that's this is a self defense blade. This is this is this is my this adventure is, blade. This that's what yeah, it is yeah. for me. It's my I know adventure that. Yeah, blade. I, I, I tell people. I said. I said this fucking crazy cat calls me on the phone and said, "Bro, I said I don't I don't do all that knife all that knife stuff." And I, I said, I, I you know I, I said, "Well, do what you do." I said, "Everybody that's reviewed it so far has 
you know, doing feather sticks and batoning, you know, they're batoning S35 VN, but I think we heat treat it enough and or, or right, you know, that we can, we've got good edge retention and still with our temper, our tempers, we're, <laughs> we're getting the toughness, you know, and nobody's broke, broke one yet. God forbid somebody go on, go on and try. But, um, you know, I'm, I am super happy with, with, John and, and the way that we're with the way we're heat treating the S thirty five EN, it's 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 turned out to be rock solid. It's this is this is a really this is gonna be a I think a, a good selling knife, dude. It's 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 sexy, it's it functional, and you can you can use it and it's and it's just big enough to where you can actually save your life with it. Or if you need to process some wood or do anything in a camp, it's lean enough you can you can I've, I've filleted fish with that blade, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, it, it's just, I'm, I'm super stoked with where, and we're, I'm already on a, a gen three. We've, we've niched the design just, just a little bit to, to strengthen up the tang and, uh, <laughs> and kind of shift the balance point just a teeny bit back a little, a little bit. You know, so on, on a on a good fighting blade, I like I like my weight right down the middle or right where I'm actually going to strike. Yep. You know, not so much in the in the in the in the in the blade itself. You know. You know. Yep. Well, well, you know what I think is part of the strength, not only the heat treat, but you know, you also striking a chord with me. You're typically in a call it two thirds or higher saber grind. Not a full yeah. flat grind. You go saber no. grind, and to me, the saber grind is the superior grind for yeah. most tasks that I need it for. It's the perfect balance between durability, strength, capable of splitting for fire prep and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yet, right. you know, you lose a little bit of the mass, so it keeps it nimble and a, just a well balanced blade. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I mean, I I try to, in a lot of like the tier one, the, the tier one C and the MKB seven, <clears throat> the the blade height or the spine thickness on the um, th they're they're different on each on each knife, and that that helps you calculate what kind of geometry you want into going into you know what you want behind behind the edge. Correct. Um, you know, you know what I'm saying? So there yeah. is, there is some math, um, you know, like I've had Renee and Silva and they were like, they, they kind of saw my, my algorithm. I was, I, I was share screening with those guys one day and they're like, bro, what? I said, that's, that's my math. You figure out your own math. <laughs> you know? Right. You know, right. but, but, you know, and, and just like the angles with your my forward finger choil, there's a certain, there's a certain range of where it works and there's and and there's a certain range <coughs> that it's it's as soon or as soon as you get outside of that range it's a, it's it's fucking useless well and i you think know, it's, yeah it's important and just to you know to to clarify for the people watching you know for example if you take the tier 1c you have a yeah. thicker stock to begin with a little bit thicker 3 yep. is it quarter no, it's a quarter. It is quarter, a quarter, right? So, yeah, sorry. Quarter inch, right? But then you bring that saber grind down a little bit. And by the time you take this angle and bevel it all the way down to that secondary bevel, you got a little more thickness behind that edge, which is yep. going to make the final grind a slightly um, wider angle. And by the time you get a yep. slightly wider angle, it's going to be a tougher knife. It's going to have a little more edge retention, a little less slicey maybe, but right, a little right. bit tougher, and that comes into play. Now, the only other thing you would do is when you start messing with it is take this primary angle, and you know you can play with it a little bit, but yeah, right. you know, it, there's not a lot you can do. So you're really setting your grind angle based upon right. the height of the geometry on that saber grind, and you can see clearly the, the difference between yes. your Tier 1C and your BC. Not only do you yeah. have the thinner stock on the BC, yeah. but you also have 
a higher grind, which means by the time yep. it makes it down to that secondary bevel, Pumpkin it's nice. thinner behind the edge, and this is going to be yep. your slicer. Yep. So and and I've I have we've redesigned the actual tier one as well, um, and I'll show you some comparison pictures, or, or you know we can do whatever you, you know whatever you want, but um, it's it's just the you know the the morph the morphing of okay here here is customers feedback here's my own feedback here is you know what what we're doing and, and and it's it's generally the same knife like there's a broader like the 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 drop point and the belly are it's broader to give me more more meat behind the tip you know i i learned i learned a lot <clears throat> at 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 part you know when i was at bark river um i was there almost a year and and I, you know, I, I learned how to convex there. You know, I never convex a knife. You know, I never, I never, um, I, I, you know, I didn't think, you know, that a convex cutting edge or, or even even a primary bevel would make a, a huge difference, and it does. Um, like on the tier one C. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, our but it's really tough. It's tough to do and it's expensive. You know, there's really only, you know, you know what, you know what I mean? And so yeah. to keep, to keep the knives, um, like, like down in the shop downstairs, I'll convex, but for production stuff, we're probably not going to convex. Um, and, and maybe some specialty, some specialty stuff that, 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 that we do I've, I've got a few designs that i'm trying to work out with the kamangas um but uh it it uh it does it does it does make a difference but creating a little bit higher a higher grind in that knife has just turned it into a freaking oh my god dude that's just, that is that is a cutting machine it you is. know you know what I mean? It is. It's in the beauty of, you know, call, you know <laughs> specifically the, the BC, this really does get into your food prep wonderfully. Yeah. Um, just a real nice, and, and I'm fortunate because, you know, and thank you very much for sending this along, but, um, you know, I have the carbon fiber handles, which yeah. leaves this just so light and nimble. Yeah. It's I know sexy and just clean, yeah. and it... it and you feel carbon fiber, fiber right? using it. Yeah, and it does <laughs> feel really good. It's really good and grippy. Yeah. And you know, we we use real carbon fiber and it is it is super it's it's super light, you know, and it and it and it's stiff and it, it just you know, like you can see Jacob Peterson, he's he is literally trying to break his BC. You know, he he asked me, he goes, Bro, what do you I said I said chip it cut antler but baton through bovine you know do like phil i, I you know I, I i told phil phil edc i was like look you know chop up aluminum block or try to test the edge on on, on aluminum block that's exactly what he did and jason is literally and you can see the flex in the blade he's working the tip where the person wedge is actually doing his job <clears throat> you know and it, it uh it, and it and it and it works, you know, like the the, the Muslim armors. The reason they put the Persian wedge, everybody says, was to make a tough a tough tip, but it's because they use uh, such a recurve blade that it created when the when the blade would flex, it would create create like a pinch, um, <coughs> on the actual on the actual blade itself, and and, and would crack. And so the Persian wedge on on Arab swords <coughs> keeps it from cracking the, the blade on the actual curve curve side. That's what it's for. 
So the and, Persian swedge here, in other words, and you know, you can correct me if it's subtly wrong, but it's a it's a almost a twisting radius around the spine torch. as it continues forward. Right? <laughs> so it's not a continuous flat swedge. It's a it's a curving radius. Right. So it's it's a, it's a, it's like the BCXs that we just did. We actually tried to switch it around because the question was, well, what if it flexes up here? It was. I was like, okay, let's try it. So we did 20 of them. So and, we're uh, running the switch in the opposite direction. We ran it in the opposite direction. Interesting. It was still, it still got small. It still was small at, at the at, at near the, the Ricasso or, or smaller and then it and it, it, it enlarged out, but but it was it was bigger at the Ricasso and it, it just it was just an experiment. And so hmm. um we've got twelve of those right now that were were um doing a bunch of special stuff to, to, you know, cause guys are buying them as, as one-offs. I was going to say, that's going to become are. a little collector's item when you find out you're yeah. the guy with the reverse Persian right. switch. Right, right. <laughs> so, so, right, exactly. But, <laughs> but that's what, you know, on your quarter inch stock blade, is that blade really going to flex? Probably not. But, you know, the, the, the engineering is still put in there. Right. Because, you know, because so. Because it's a Phobos knife. Because it's a full knife, right? You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So now you've also, uh, you know, you've also introduced your, you know, fairly traditional. Uh, this, you know, I'd call this a drop point style with your unsharpened yep. swedge. So your traditional unsharpened swedge yep. uh, for what? Uh, piercing and some edge durability, well, or I should what, say, the what? tip durability. Correct. Well, what what like the true the true test of sharp is is a push cut. But we, we, we've all sharpened knives to where you sharpen it and it's slicing great and then you try to push cut and it just mashes the paper. It's like, how is it even possible? Mm. Oh, it, 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 you know, but what, what a drop point does is as, as a knife starts to penetrate, it, it changes the angle of the actual edge itself and then therefore creates a slicing action just by pushing the blade down. True. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, like, a lot sure. of things, yeah, right. So like, like with, on the tier one series, <clears throat> I've, I've got a slight recurve. The, what the recurve is, is to, as, as a, as a knife dolls, the recurve allows you to have this, this, instead of a push cut action, a more slicey, a more slicey angle. So you can, you get better, cutting performance for a, a little bit longer but even Eric, as your knife how, how do i sharpen a recurve right well it's not it's not that hard <laughs> it's, right? it's not <laughs> you know, like on the mkb on the mkb sevens you can see the here is the spine of the knife is this direction and the actual blade of the knife goes up well what that mimics is a recurved blade but it's a flat edge so a, a younger soldier can actually sharpen it, you know, more more effectively or easy, easier, or, or it's more easiest and, to sharpen. And, it. and just to say this, because a lot of people don't get this, for the most part, between the quality of the knife and the steel, the overall heat treat and the edge retention, chances are pretty good unless you really mess up. You shouldn't have to like truly sharpen your knife. If you're taking steel off of your knife, you're doing a lot that's fairly aggressive and potentially ruining yes. the performance of the knife. So use yes. things like straps, use things like fine yep. ceramic rods and hone your edge and keep yep. your edge honed so that you're not <clears throat> in a point where you actually need to use diamond. Because if you're taking steel off your knife, chances are you're either not really doing what right. you should with your knives and kind of being sloppy, or you're changing the edge geometry because chances are you're not going to get it the same as what it comes from the factory, and it's dialed right. in when you get it. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it is dialed in. But and that's what I try, I try to tell folks um, when you're when you're sharpening. You know, profile, profile your blade, or and once you get a blade, you try to keep it in profile. Yep. Well, as long if, if you keep it in profile, all you have to do is hone. Yes. And you use. Your 800s, your ceramics, your thousands, your 1200, or whatever sandpaper or jeweler's rouge and leather, whatever whatever you're using, or the side of a, you know the edge of a window, you know you know polycarb or, or whatever it is that you're using to hone, um, and strop your knife. But if, if if you keep it 
if you keep it in profile, you know, I've had dudes that had their original minis and they're in three years. And I said, I ain't sharpened my knife in three fucking years. Right. I strop it every now and then, you know, and, the, and he says, I use my knife like every day. Right. You know, and, 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 you know, and people just, and, and it's, and it's, it's just an uninformed um, knife user. And, and it's, and that's not a lick on anybody. I was, I was one of those dudes. Oh, you know, most guys, it. everybody, you, I, I did it for a long time. Yeah. You, you know, you buy your new folder cause your old folder's dull, you know, it's, you know, you know what I'm yep. saying? <laughs> so, um, but if, if you don't let your, 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 your secondary bevel get out of profile, all you'll have to do is drop it and it'll stay sharp and it, it will be, it, it will be wicked for you as long as you need it to be. Yep. You know, I agree. Uh, so Eric, there's just a few last little details when it comes down to the actual anatomy of your blades and your design. Something else that resonates through some of your models, you end up with this notch here, which for me, I mean, this is what I would call my my ferrule rod notch. I mean, is that really what this is intended that's for? What, that is, yeah, that's exactly what it's for, and and it's a little bit bigger. Than, I, I shouldn't even give the the numbers away, but um, it's made it's. It's made to like even um what's it, Uber, Uber or Uber Lieben, I think is the 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 ferro rod company like they're they make the most badass ferro rods ever. Um, that that the octagonal ferro rod that they have will fit in that notch. And that's that big. Crazy, that's the same yeah. no matter which model, right? Yep. Pretty much, yeah, exactly the same every model. Nice. <laughs> no, very, it's like very cool 2.35 across or something something like that and a quarter inch deep um you know it's, it's just, some some people say it's like, oh it's a half inch it's not it's 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 a very specific size so whether you're using a, a small ferro rod or or the big you know eight inch octagonal ferro rod which throws crazy sparks globs of goo <laughs> globs of fire Yep. You know, and then so like Jim Jim Lowe has done a video with his MKB seven. He's like, bro, that this thing absolutely just throws this it's a freaking dragon, you yep. know, and it and it's and again, it's it's if you if you've actually used a knife and failed, don't ask me how I know that. Um, and you've you've been stuck out there freezing your balls off, wet, cold, hungry. You know, and you've used you've used a blade, then you you come to understand like okay, this needs to be this, yes, or this 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 thing that they have here going on needs to be over here, yes. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. It does. So, it, it takes the knowledge of <laughs> being out there and having to do it when it matters yeah. to realize. And I I firmly understand that. I've definitely been there. You so, know, like like some of the things like like talking. Like the minis, like here's here's the new the new EDC inside the waistband sheath for the mini. Now, this sheath will fit your your Bark River collab. It'll fit your Gen Two Phobos mini. It'll fit. Now here's the full thickness handles on on a full size four inch four inch blade mini. in there here is the three and a half inch mini with the thin the thin EDC scales nice it's in there yeah here's the trainer with the 280 thick scales Now the trainer rattles around a little bit, but it's a trainer. Yep. Not gonna be, you know, you're, it's designed for you to to practice your draw. It's my custom mini, but it's it's the it's got the Gen two scales profiled to the original mini shape. This this blade is like six or seven years old.
fits in the sheath. Nice. Uh, so I'm gonna you you if you have the Gen Gen two scales, you have to kind of mod the front of the the um, the scale so they'd be exact profile. They're a little bit different, but that's that's what I try to do. Like is is design. You know, like like when we were doing this, there's no glue on this sheath. It's all the um, the the screws that you use on a, on a holster to hold it together. Yep. The reason being, so you can take this, you can take it apart and use your tensioners, or sorry, not in the camera, use your tensioners to to hold the knife as strongly as you need it to be held. So this is this is a true, you know. Just, just like, like, like Shiv works. Like you go, to, you want to go to a knife school, go to Shiv works. Those boys got it going on, and that's, and that's kind of. I mean, this is this is obviously a sheet that fits this, you know, our, our knives. But the 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 philosophy is is the same. Is inside the waistband on your appendix, you know, because if I'm on my back, <clears throat> I can, and someone's on top of me. I can't reach on the underneath myself. I can't, but I can. I can create a little bit of space, reach in and draw my knife, and and stab you. If I'm on top of you, I can create. I can create just a little bit of space, reach in, get my knife. If it's in that appendix, carry, and and so, um, you know, that's what we've tried to do with with this sheath. But we know every the mini is our most popular knife. You know, now there's the mini mini. And why why make a sheet that doesn't that doesn't fit? <clears throat> it just didn't make sense to make didn't didn't make sense to make a sheet that uh, each guy needed a new sheet for each knife. You, you know you know you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I was talking with John Junior, you know he's like, "Bro, how the how are we gonna do this?" I was like, "Well, here, here's the spine. Here's this. Here, you know, and 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 it, it'll work." And so the the retention is again just like the grip. The, the sheath is pinching here and it's pinching on the same scales because this handle profile is let me let me get these together even though these are the same exact handles I don't know if you can you see it yeah where's the you know the hand so the whole pattern is the same the grip so even though this is a mini, this is a three inch, three and a half inch mini mini trainer, this is a four inch blade. There, the handles are are identical. So because the ergos, <clears throat> the ergos don't change. If I'm going to create a utilitarian fighting blade, why you know why would if it ain't broke, don't don't fix it. Yeah, you got you got the handle dialed in. That's kind of where we started. You know, I think it's an important thing to talk about because I don't care what model it is. You've created a thin profile, the ability to carry nice and thin, tight to the side. Even if you're carrying it on a pack, it's not going to get (laughs) snagged. It's an extremely thin profile. And so, you know, you've pulled that off wonderfully. Never mind the fact that you have all the different mounting points. You know, for me, I mean, you know, you you do a nice job delivering this right away with a yeah. quality dangler. That's fantastic. Or if you, <coughs> you know, go with your blade tech, you know, pretty standard. Or you could go with a dots lock. You know, if you want, you can go with yep. molly locks and you can thin it out. You could put this just simply through straps. I've I've yep. lost I've lost the clips altogether and just literally carried this on straps, no problem. So I mean, yep. you have a lot of flexibility. And if you have models that have the leather sheath, this is actually yep. almost as flexible and versatile. Yep. Where you know you end up with pretty much an ambidextrous right hand or left hand scout style if you want you have all these beautiful straps and i mean i custom dyed mine because uh, yeah. you know i was like i'm gonna put a little time into this and you know it, it became a nice little art piece for me and i just i mean i think it's freaking gorgeous so i mean it's really from a total package perspective you know again you can tell you are absolutely sweating the details man yeah well, like even like even the new the new sheets that we now have, like this this is, um, like this this set's going to Cliff Gray the out the outfitter up in Montana or this is the Idaho. 
But um, so this is a stone washed tier one mini with the full size handles. And this sheath, I don't want to bump the computer, but this 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 sheath comes with a three inch a double button three inch dangler. So I can either carry this mm. horizontal, I can carry it this way, I can carry it this way, or I can carry it, carry it straight, right? It's got um, 79 pound magnet. Oh, wow. Nice. Yep. You know, all over. And, and then it's, it's, this is our thin combative sheath. You can literally take, you can take the strap, the strap off. And you can take the snap off and just use the magnetic retention, or you can put the strap in the front. Like say you wanted to carry this inside the waistband and you could put the snap, you could put this snap on this side and put the strap on the other side and, and flip it around. I to do where that you a lot. That's it. really cool. You, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's nice. So, and, and then it has the, and you can still use an Alti clip either inside or outside of this knife or you know inside the you know the belt loops yep <clears throat> so the er it's just it's just all this stuff you know it's like okay this is this is what i would this is what i want you know this is what i need you know to to freaking solve most likely and then most dangerous no i love it man so well you know, I don't care if it's the the tier one lineup. I don't care if it's your, you know, your your Cacula or your. Alex. <laughs> I mean, you've absolutely been crushing the design. So let's leave everybody with a little taste, tasty tidbit. What is next for Eric Hansen and Phobos Knives? What's next? Well, we're we're de we're getting ready to drop the minis and the mini minis. The, we've we've had some uh, distributor. We've 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 had some some company to company problems with um, who's doing what and you know and, and it's just it is what it is so it's, there's been a delay but there as as you can see you know I've got the PVD versions the EDC versions the the stone wash uh, you know the different sheets everything is ready to go so that's the next two knives that are dropping are going to be the Gen three Tier one mini. Which is this bad boy right here? Show, I'll show the show side right there. Nice. Super sexy. And then there's also the mini or the mini mini, excuse me. And let's see here. That's the three and a half inch version. With the EDC scales. Now this this mini has the cutouts in the handle scales as well. So here is a mini with the EDC scales on it. So this is the four inch blade and it's super ridiculously light with the car carbon fiber. So super nice. So that's the four, that's the four inch version. Nice with the cutouts so and you know some guys are saying you know is is it strong or less strong or yeah anytime you thin out any kind of material it's less strong but we're not we're not this is a, a four inch utility blade that's that's meant to it's it weighs with carbon fiber scales it weighs five ounces you're gonna forget it's you <laughs> just like your khaki you know your calcula weighs like with the fire and carbon fiber scales, like just, just over six ounces, you forget that you have a nine inch piece, you know, almost a nine inch piece of steel there. Right. You know, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? You forget that it's there. And that's, that's the, that's the purpose is it's not, it's there to be a tool and contribute to your endeavor, not to be a burden, you know, a, a burden on you. So, um, you know, like, like on our Karambits, I, I do semi, I do the cutouts, 
and and I'll I'll show you some 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 pictures. We've just done some redesigns. We worked with some, some dude in the uh, Sophie in the Netherlands, and he's he's said, hey, we should make some, you know, some make these changes, do it this and do it that way. So we we just redesigned um, the uh, our our line of karambits. But I take I take. 1875 thick and I go 60 in 60 in so I've just literally cut out <clears throat> two-thirds of the weight but maintain the strength yep. and then <clears throat> and you'll see the way I do the cutouts there's spars and train and there's a, a lot of engineering it looks like a freaking bridge <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I mean it's yeah. and, and I mean you're an engineer yourself you know so you you, you get it but it's those it's those little things that make or break you know, if you're use if if you're carrying a karambit, you're there to knife fight. You're there, you're there to save your life, and you know, so you need a blade, and especially because you get so aggressive and you're banging away, it's 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 very easy to you know when you're working on the telephone pole or the 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 six the six inch uh, um, pole, um, then you can you can break a knife. And if you're using a folder, it only takes two or three hits on a. On a on a real life pole, and you, yep. your your folder is going to be. It's you understand how worthless they are for 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 defending yourself. Um, so that's that's it in a, in a nutshell. You know the the scallops, the pinch, you know the 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 jimping, the the swedges. <clears throat> you know, I just it's in my head, bro. I can't I can't stop it. Well, I so, love it. Keep it coming. Uh, I think everybody, you know, has been, you know, obviously huge fans of your work, of your designs, of the quality, yeah. the craftsmanship. Um, I mean, it's a total package. So, uh, Eric, we're looking forward to more. Thank you very much for, you know, coming on tonight. I hope everybody enjoyed that. So thank you to everybody for uh, following along. And uh, with that, man. Thanks for having me, brother. Uh, as always, I think we will uh, probably, we'll probably do this again. Yeah, I'm 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 down with it, dude. It just you know, whatever whatever you need. I love it. Almost not. All right, thanks, brother. All right, my friend. Have a good night. Talk to you soon. Alrighty.